You may have heard about or seen for yourself the tears in a wine glass, sometimes called the wine's legs. And if you have a wine glass, you can swirl it around to distribute the wine on the inside of the glass, and you'll see that the film quickly forms these channels. Rivulets is the technical term, and some people claim that you can tell something about the wine's quality or sweetness by reading into the legs, kind of like reading tea leaves or something like that. But, uh, you know, like most stories, it's actually totally not true. There's actually a really good physical explanation, and there's some pretty interesting science behind that. The effect occurs because wine is a mixture of water and ethanol, and the two fluids have different properties. Most importantly, the water has a higher surface tension, and the ethanol has a higher evaporation rate. So when we swirl the glass around, we distribute a film of wine, which is the uh, wine's original mixture of water and ethanol on the inside surface of the glass. But since the ethanol evaporates more quickly, after we uh, warm the glass up with our hand, for example, that wine film on the side of the glass will be richer in water than it originally started out because the ethanol has evaporated away more quickly. And since the water has a higher surface tension, it tends to pull the wine up into a bead kind of at the top of the sheet, at the top of the film. And as more and more uh, ethanol evaporates, more and more water will get pulled up to the top of the film. And eventually there's just so much water up here that it forms a rivulet and the water bead drops back down into the wine glass. This is known as the Marangoni effect, and it's actually a sort of heat engine. And so if we put heat into the system, for example, warming the glass up with a heat gun, you can see that the uh, fluid actually gets pulled up the side of the glass and starts this process in motion. Here's a shallow dish of wine into which I'm going to drop a single drop of pure alcohol. As you can see, the, the wine, which has much more water in it than the pure alcohol, runs away from the alcohol-rich area. Uh, this is because the surface tension of the wine, which is mostly water, is much higher than the surface tension of the pure alcohol. The same thing is happening in the side of the wine glass, where the water that's on the side of the glass has a higher surface tension and it's actually pulling itself away from the wine that's in the glass. Here's another interesting demonstration of the Marangoni effect. If you've made one of these soap paper boats before, you've seen that the surface tension is actually what drives this boat along. And uh, the soap causes there to be lower surface tension in the stern of the boat, and the front is just paper, and so the higher surface tension in front of the boat is actually what pulls it forward. The Marangoni effect also plays a role in forming convection currents. So I'm just heating this up. Uh, it's mostly just water in the speaker. And you can see the patterns that form are actually partially caused by a surface phenomenon. So water has a lower uh, surface tension if it's hot. And the hotter areas that rise up because of the lower density are actually pulled into colder regions on the surface by the Marangoni effect. So as the hot water rises, it gets pulled over into cooler areas where it sinks back down. And so the, the lateral motion at the surface of the liquid is caused by the Marangoni effect. The effect is quite a bit stronger for liquids that have an even faster evaporation rate than ethanol. So in this case, I mixed up some water and some acetone and food coloring, and you can see that the level at which the film is pulled up the side of the glass is much higher because the uh, more quickly evaporating acetone leaves the water uh, more quickly, and so that film on the side of the glass becomes water-rich at a faster rate than in just the wine. So if someone claims they can determine the alcohol content of their wine by looking at the tears or the legs, there's at least some kernel of truth in there. But as we'll see, the uh, environmental factors, the temperature of the glass, the temperature of the air, the humidity in the room, and even the cleanliness of the glass are much bigger factors. When I started making this video, I actually had a really big problem forming any of the wine tears at all. I'd pour it in the glass and try different temperatures and everything, and nothing would really form. And then it dawned on me that all of the glassware that I was using had been through my automatic dishwasher, and I used this um, finishing rinse, Jet Dry. And this is a substance that's actually designed to stick to the glass and allow the water to sheet off without forming droplets or rivulets inside the glass. 
and I quickly looked at the MSDS and there is a polymer in here that I suspect is uh, to make it thick and sticky so that it stays on the glass. I'll probably do a video in the future about jet dry. The Marangoni effect is not just for wine drinkers and soap boat builders. There's actually real technical implications of this effect as well. If you're watching this video on a desktop or laptop PC, there's probably a device like this inside. This is a heat pipe that carries heat away from the CPU and GPU out to a heat sink where it can, get, where it can be blown out of the computer. And inside this heat pipe, there's a low boiling point fluid so that it boils on this side and the vapor travels through the pipe to this side and it condenses over here and uh, dumps the heat out. These heat pipes can be made to work with a single substance inside so that the vapor is moving in one direction and the liquid is moving in the other direction. However, what we can do is put a whole bunch of uh, like basically metal filings in here and then use the surface tension effect to help pull the liquid back over to the CPU where it can be boiled again. So using two substances inside here, kind of like water and ethanol, although that's, that's not what they use, um, we can make use of the Marangoni effect to get the liquid pumped back to where we need it. Okay, see you next time. Bye.